uh, World War II fighter. So opening up the two images. And we have them saved in subject, which is digital design thinking, Photoshop, World War II fighter, and we have a fighter and some fire. So control to select both. We're going to be mainly working on the fighter one. So first thing we're going to do is switch to that and go file, save as, <coughs> and we're going to save this as a Photoshop document and we're going to call this uh, World War II Fighter. Um, so we've got that, saved it and when we're doing this we're going to be doing it as non-destructive editing. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to drag that down and we're going to drag it to the new layer. Now you can't see the new layer icon but the alternative is to control J for a new layer we're going to turn that off and we're going to call this fighter so that looks great the other way to do new layer is to go layer and we can duplicate layer um, so we're going to mask out the propeller um, are we? I'm just checking, no it's double sided so the first thing we are going to do is we're going to add some noise to the plane to make it a little bit more looking like a fighter plane. So we're going to go new layer which is layer and new layer or shift control n or the little plus icon down the bottom of your screen. Uh, new layer. So this is noise um, so we're just going to call it that and it should be above there. So we're going to fill that with white so if we hit D to reset our colors and then we can flip to white the paint bucket might be gradient tool but we want the paint bucket fill it full of white and then we are going to go filter noise add noise and we want to be um, monochromatic and about 50 percent so it's going to look pretty much like that now we're going to change opacity to 40% and we're going to go blend mode to soft light and you can see it's added speckles into the plane and to actually do a clipping mask we hold the alt key down and hover in between there with the alt key held down and click what that does is it clips anything that's not visible like so it clips all the white out onto that layer so we're going to save that control s and keep going so now we're going to mask out the propeller spin that around and smudge it um, smudge it up a bit so we're going to make a copy of the lane or the fighter layer. Now to do this we're going to hold alt down, drag it up and that will duplicate the layer um, without clipping it out. Um, so that's fairly easy. Now we're going to select a, make, create a mask with the little Pokemon tool. So I'm going to just move that so I can click that. Um, and that creates a layer mask painting anything around will get rid of uh, painting in black will get rid of it get rid of the image painting in white will retrieve it and just to show you I'm going to hide that switch to that I'm going to go brush tool I'm going to use a relatively small brush to start with so I'm going to increase the size and I'm just going to paint out everything that's not the propeller I don't have to be accurate because we are essentially going to be um, blurring and doing all that. So in close like that and this is much easier with a graphics tablet um, I'm using mouse at the moment. So zoom, control, plus and minus to zoom in and out and square brackets to increase and decrease the size of the brush. 
so and just masking this out. Now this is um, this particular task is aiming to introduce quite a few concepts, um, blend layers, a bit of masking, um, extent like extending use of masks, and also cropping and transforming um, the blur tool, the smudge tool, and lots of lots of blurring happening. Okay, so I've made a couple of mess, um, areas that are a bit messy, so what I can do is I can um, change to white and I'm just going to paint those areas back in um, just to fix those up. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate that, so drag it down. We're going to right click and go apply layer mask. So what that does is it actually creates it as if it's a selection. Um, I could have fixed that up a bit more, but that's okay. Um, and then we're going to smudge. So we're going to select the smudge tool. We're going to select a brush of 60. And we're going to make the strength probably about 50%. And the idea is that um, we want hardness of zero so it's a soft brush what we call a soft brush and we're going to um, zoom out we're going to smudge it in a counterclockwise direction so we're going to smudge that way and we're just going to smudge a little bit at a time we're not going to smudge huge amounts so we're going to do that so and then we're going to take the original we're going to duplicate it again apply the layer mask apply the, right click that apply the layer mask and we're going to smudge it a bit more so we're going to build our smudge um, around a bit so we're just doing that and we could probably do that three or four times um, I would possibly um, duplicate it again. Um, we can cheat a bit. Oh no, we're not going to cheat a bit. I possibly would cheat, but um, just smudging it around. So we've got something like that. Um, and I'm going to save it. And now we're going to create a new layer above all the other spin layers. So blank layer, and we're going to call this spin. Now I would possibly prop, call these, rename these to prop because we are professionals. Well, we're learning to be professionals. So spin layer. So on the spin layer, we're going to use the brush tool. We're going to have it at 10 and we're going to have a hardness of zero, diameter of 10 um, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a layer in there or a circle around and around there in that gold color and in a color in the middle. So I'm going to use the eyedropper tool. So I'm going to hold eye down and click. So what that does holding eye down is it lets you use the eyedropper tool without swapping or I can use the eyedropper tool, click and then click back to the brush tool. So I'm going to draw a circle, and if you do this fair, fairly quickly, um, it's a bit better. So that was horrible. Um, might take you several goes. That's not too bad. We're going to blur that up, so that's okay. And then I'm going to hold I down, select in there, and I'm going to do another circle there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and we're going to drag this um, just so that we lose the definition of that. And I might duplicate that to give it, to so we um, get it a bit more, um, and filter, blur, 
causing blur. So I duplicated the layer and I'm just blurring a bit more just so it makes it stand out a bit. Um, and then I'm going to click on the fighter plane. So it's could have worked on the blur the propeller bit a bit more um, but once we add the fire in it probably won't be that noticeable. So we've got the fire image. So this is our fire image. Um, we're going to make sure it's the right size. So we go image, image size, and we want to make sure it's 550 pixels, which it is. So that's awesome. So um, I'm going to just go OK on that. Um, so we're going to um, copy all of this. So um, move tool, copy all of it. Um, nice way to do this is to actually just get, drag it up into there and onto there. Rename it as fire. So doing that again, just so I grab the background layer, drag it up over the tab and put it in there. So, um, so drag that to the bit. <coughs> so we've got a fire layer. Now we're going to start off with um, this bit here. So I'm going to grab the lasso tool and I'm just going to grab this and we're going to use this to add a bit of damage to the plane. So I'm going to duplicate control J and if you have a look what that does is it creates this and I'm going to just start it there and control T for free transform and I'm going to scale holding shift I can um, drag all those around cover most of the plane hit enter and then I'm going to mask it and I'm going to um, mask out anything that is off the plane so I'll zoom in control plus to zoom in and I'm essentially just masking out anything that's not on the plane bit bigger brush to speed this up and um, we'll do this roughly to start with and then in a little bit I'll um, fix it up so um, keep that on the propeller so uh, we're just adding a bit of damage into the Plane. that looks right and I can paint those bits back in make my brush smaller um, to get in around there and so what we're going to do is we're going to um, drop the um, So, sorry about this, just reading my instructions. Right, so I would, I'm going to drop the, change this to, um, change my layer mode to overlay. So that adds a bit of damage into there. So we're going to add some smoke in. Um, so we're going to create a new layer with um, that and we're going to call it smoke. And we're going to choose a brush. We're going to choose a brush of about 50 pixels. And we're going to set the hardness to zero and the opacity to 10%. Now what this does is on my smoke layer I can click and it just clicks just single clicks and it will layer up 10% difference each time and we're going to brush sort of off the back of the plane and out of the engines and we're going to click and we want to create a sense of smoke trail coming out 
and we can make the brush bigger to mix it up a bit smaller and um, s smaller is better or less is better in this case um, I'm going to pause this for now so at 15 minutes and I'm going to finish it later so keep, we'll keep watching that's just been the end of the lesson so to teach some other people so um, yeah and girls about some computing stuff so um we're about to just go through from here we've done the smoke layer and we're just going to put some flame in and after we do some flame um, we're going to well, we're going to add a bit of flame to the overall um, plane and then we're going to add some flame on the propeller now I, I personally think the propeller could probably have a bit more work done on it but um, I'll leave that to you so we've got the fire layer here so we're going to actually go back to that so I'm going to just quickly turn this off um, so, and we're going to find some nice bits of flame now I like either maybe that bit or this bit's really nice so I'm going to just use the lasso tool again um, I'm going to just grab this flame and we can grab um, as much or as little as we want to find that bit and I'm going to control J and I'm going to drag it right up the top I'll turn that layer off again I'll turn those back on now this here um, is um, we're, we're not going to use masks or anything like that we're just going to sort of put this flame down the side of it and then we'll add a bit of flame to the propeller and the idea is that we're going to um, just hide So we're going to just align it, control T to align it, so I might have it happening a bit like that, so sort of coming out the back along there, um, I might make it a bit bigger, sort of tuck it in a bit like that, and instead of using layer masks, we're going to do a bit of destructive editing, which is okay every now and again. So we're going to use a, a eraser tool, so the eraser tool. We're going to drag the opacity down a fair bit. We're going to use a fairly large and soft brush. So I'm going to zoom in. And the idea here is that we're just clicking in around the edges of this. We're trying to get rid of that harsh edge. So we want to sort of keep click, 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 sort of all the way around. So even up this end, we're going to just get rid of that harsh, solid edge. If you move up and down, it doesn't to erase it, it's sort of removing bits and pieces. Now that doesn't look too bad, but it's a bit, um, not as bit solid, so we're going to drag the opacity down a little bit, and we'll just so we've got a bit of 
far too much bitch. Maybe a bit too much. Let's control T. And I'm just gonna drag so I make it a bit more pointed. So I've done that. Um, and I'm thinking that we might put a bit more flame coming out the back a bit. So we might have um so we might I'm gonna Now, new tool, we're going to right click, um, the tr control T to transform and warp, and what warp does, it allows me to drag, the, right, um, distort my selection into pretty much any shape, so I can drag sort of start to get that happening like that. And I might um, do that and then using the same technique before with the eraser I'm just going to mask it off a bit there and lighten it up. So we've got a bit of flame hanging along there. Now, once we've done that, all that really needs to be done is to um, put a background in. Now, so the background um, is quite easy. Like, the easiest way to do this is right down the bottom, you're going to create a new layer. So blank layer and call it BG for background and I'm going to gradient tool and if I click that let's have a look at that I'm going to just do maybe a really basic um, maybe a sky gradient so something like that nice blue to that one and I'm just going to on my BG layer I'm just going to drag across and then I am going to select my fighter plane and I'm going to change the blending to um, maybe this is like this. And it's not too bad, but we can fix it. Sorry, it's just disturbed. But, um, so you can put an image in um, pretty much a um, similar way, but that doesn't. That looks okay. Um, I actually think I prefer it without that. I'd an image in behind it. So to put an image in behind it, um, great website to find royalty free images is Unsplash. So I'm going to do a uh, maybe I'll do a beach background. We're going to fight a crashing beach. Um, Skyline. Oh, that looks nice, but actually, 
here. Let's grab that one. So I'll just download that. Um, save it. So that's the name of it. Save it. And these are appreciated but um, not expected. So this is this guy here. Shout out to Sean O on Unsplash. Um, thanks for letting me use your beautiful beach picture. So back into Photoshop. I'm going to go File. Open. Um, and it was in my downloads. This one here. It's going to be massive. So I'm going to select all copy. I'm going to paste. So to give you an idea. Control T. That's the size of it. So I'm going to just drag it smaller. Zoom in, drag it smaller, I'll fix up all the um, ugliness shortly. Um, this is the Now, um, you might have noticed that I actually pasted it above the noise layer, um, so I'll put it there. Um, now, fixing that up, if I was to um, sort of blur the edges of the plane a bit, that would make it look better. You can really see that the propeller needs a bit of adjusting. And what I might do is to make it look a bit more dated. So I'm going to group all that together. And we can use actions. We have this wonderful action that is called sepia and I'm going to push play and it sort of adds a date. Now you like it just makes it that orangey black and white. Now the prop needs a lot of work like it was alright um, doing it quickly but I would just I need um, if I go back to here um, I only did one, two, three, I would probably do four, five, six, and I'd probably do a couple more of these spin layers, like so. Duplicate this. Um, I can even uh, I'm careful. Oh, so right now I've seeped it so it's flattened it so you won't see that. Um, so lots of things you can do to fix it up. Um, it's not a bad little exercise. Again, this was aimed at teaching you quite a few tools. The tools that we've learned are about learned about blending layers, used opacity, we've used uh, filter Gaussian blur, we've used the brush tool in different 
manner with this eraser tool with a low opacity. Um, we've used brush tool with a low opacity as well for the smoke. So having a look at this. Um, we've used the smudge and the blur tool. We've used layer masks. We've used clipping masks. Um, change the blending layer again. We've labeled everything except for these layers. So flame and flame. And I think that is about it. Um, this one. So thank, thank you for watching it.